we're just going to go until we're done. But I can't do this forever because I don't want to lose my voice, and I do have to stream for four and a half hours tomorrow as well with, uh, I don't have to, I choose to stream for four and a half hours with Synergy and Jay Barino. So I don't know much about Mint Crystal's skill level. We're going to see how this goes. We saw in the first series that, oh, excuse me, that Swan is a pretty powerful commander, has the ability to stay alive for a very long time. The drill is powerful and has its abilities on off cooldown very quickly. Mint Crystal is low master EU. Well, that means that it should. I'm not sure exactly what master level Full Heart is, but I think that's going to mean that it is a pretty decent matchup between these two. I'm looking forward to seeing what Mint Crystal is going to try to pull out with Swan. These are two very slow to ramp up commanders this time. Are we going to see the Starport tech coming out of Swan this time, or are we going to see a different thing going on? And he goes for the factory tech. Siege tanks could be very powerful here. However, yeah, maybe they could just be very powerful. The leaping infested though could be quite a problem. And the ability to attack would basically be zero with a siege tank based army. I think that if you want to get aggressive against your opponent at any point, you have to be going for those raids of Swan. Nothing else he has has any mobility. And I think that if you go for example, that big tank play, you are opening yourself up to a lot of vulnerability when it comes to the Apocalypse, right? That big boy has so much HP. I think it's like 4,200 HP. He's basically unkillable by any army that is not maxed. And that's pretty problematic if you're trying to go for the ground army because he can dive right under those tanks. At some point. It's Kerrigan, not Stukov. What am I talking about? Whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I'm so used to Stukov now, and you can tell I'm getting a little bit fatigued. Listen, I'm sure that we're going to see a Swan versus Stukov at some point, so everything I said is very, very important. It's going to be on the test, okay? So make sure that you study up. Um, Kerrigan is weird. Hmm. Huh. Are raids really good against Kerrigan? I think raids are really good against Kerrigan, guys. Cyclone. I have no idea what is happening with this build order. It is the one cyclone timing attack into the peace timer. Uh. Race would straight out lose the fight versus Muse. However, they could snipe that detection. Once again, I'm just not, I'm, I'm very concerned. So if you scout with your cyclone and the turf, <laughs> Kerrigan just kills it in one shot. <laughs> Good try. Trying to be cheeky and be like, oh no, my laser accidentally shot the... Nope. You don't mess with Kerrigan. She's the monster. As we all knew. Because there's no Stugovs in this at all. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. Siege tanks are coming out. And that kind of concerns me. What exactly are siege tanks going to do against Kerrigan? The powerhouses of the Kerrigan Force seem to be Kerrigan herself. The Raptorlings seem like they could be very good, which have the ability to jump on top of the Siege Tanks. And then the Mutalisks. None of these are truly vulnerable. In fact, speaking of vulnerable, it does look like it is the four minute mark and Full Heart is looking to get a little bit aggressive here. There's only one Siege Tank and a Flaming Betty out. Laser Drill is gonna be able to put pressure on Kerrigan if she chose to commit. Looks like she does not and heads right back home instead. I have a feeling that Full Heart could have actually just won that game, maybe? I'm not entirely sure, but this is one siege tank and I don't think that was enough. Perdition turrets are not scary. And Kerrigan does get shields as she does damage. Hellbats are on the way. Interesting. Hellbat Goliath might actually be a composition here. And you know what? Science vessels with irradiates could be very strong as well. The mutas have to be clumped up if they want to fight effectively. Interesting. 
Very interesting. Oh, we're over here now. The fire bats obviously are kind of a mineral dump for the most part, but they do make sure well, you only have to add a couple to your army and you know for a fact that there's going to be no zerglings in the fight, especially because they have that armor upgrade. I believe it gives you two armor on your hell bats. Zerglings will never be able to contest these. And I think they have an HP increase over the multiplayer one as well. The Hercules is out. Is this going to be a Hellbat drop? Oh, this is spicy. I like this a lot. Getting very active with Swan. Going to jump right into the main base. Dropping the blue flame Hellbats right here. Kerrigan is going to be in position. The entire mineral line gets eviscerated. This is a great play right now. Is he going to be able to get out? I'm not entirely sure. The drill is making it hard to chase. Hellbats do get dropped off. And is this Hercules going to be able to escape? No. Stops microing it, unfortunately. But an entire mineral line was taken out of full heart. Kerrigan is having economic woes now. And he was able to scout these mutas. The mutas seem like a great choice here. However, there's no defenses coming up here, really. There's one missile turret, a second one being built. That's not enough. Eh, okay. You know what? I can dig this. Is there going to be another Hercules drop? Kerrigan is now moving across the map. And this means that this base is really vulnerable. Oh, this could be really sweet. One thing that I've noticed is that Mint Crystal has not upgraded the drill at all. That's so many fire her hellbats. I don't know if there is a way to respond to it, honestly. As soon as it gets in there, all the drones are going to be dead. Fullheart has had to be rebuilding this entire time. Is Mint Crystal just going to keep this in the back as a counterattack measure? That's pretty neat. Or is this... Oh, it's going to be double drops. Mint Crystal is going to jump into both mineral lines at the same time, doing the doom drops, trying to kill all the workers. Oh, this is beautiful. Very cool. Kerrigan has to use her ultimate in order to stun everything. This is going to get cleaned up. Full heart is down to four, 15 workers. One third of the workers of Mint Crystal. This was a very successful harass. But once again, are the Mutas just going to come back, counterattack, and win the game? These mutas are very strong, and this is a very, very exposed expansion right here. I do not like this placement at all. It should have been next to these turrets. And there just aren't that many turrets. Oh, the warbots. They can shoot air. That's a good point. Oh, warbots. They can shoot Kerrigan. Uh, it does look like pulling back to the turrets. The mutas just do so much damage. The drill being unupgraded means it does not have its cooldowns to call to help out. That's one of the big problems with Swan is it is expensive to get his cooldowns going. Laser is barely whittling through these mutas very slowly. Goliaths are out on the field, but not many more are being produced. A lot of money in the bank for Mint Crystal. It looks like Fullheart is going to be able to make something happen again. On the back edge, losing all of his workers once again, and still... Yeah, she can. Read the rules. Come on, guys. Goliaths are now out on the field and they actually are going to be able to uh oh that's not good they are going to be able to push everything back Mint Crystal now the one at 15 workers with the 23 of full heart both players have been pretty bruised and battered here a low economy game is not the kind of game you want to be playing as a person without a hero. Because that hero is going to just keep getting value over time. And yeah, that's going to be the end of Mint Crystal.